Good afternoon. I am Derek Hogan at North Florida Technical College, and I've got a little interesting problem for us today. Okay, let's say, for example, I need to make this piece. I could do this on a, on a standard, standard manual lathe, and it'd be perfectly fine. I also could do this on a CNC machine. Now, you know, I'd have to have some CNC, the ability to cut a knurl on a CNC machine. Well, let's just say, for example, it's late one evening, and I'm trying to finish up these parts right here. And I need to run this, and I realize I haven't got one for that machine I'm running. What do I do then? Well, some machines will allow you to do what I'm about to do here. Some won't, but you have to have the ability for it to know where your rotation is. Um, our Mazak lathe does. So I'm going to show you how to do this on our Mazak lathe. By the way, before we go anywhere else, let me show you a couple of things on this right here. If you've ever wanted to draw a neural on a piece, there's several steps you've got to do. Let's just take you back here. Okay, first off, I created myself an axis right here. We need an axis to control my rotation. If I come into Fusion here, I'm going to do a coil right here. The coil right here. I can use that as a means to cut. I've created one of those. My angle here, I'll show you how I found that angle here in a little bit to get this to match up to what it actually would be for a medium neural. Then I do a pattern. The pattern produces the one that's going around the outside. Then I take that pattern and I mirror it. By mirroring that pattern, it creates the whole second part of the neural. And that allows me to have my piece and my piece drawn up in the neural. Now, I will say if you got to make a drawing with this right here, it's going to turn into a mess. I wouldn't necessarily recommend making a drawing using this, but it works well. Let's go back here for a second. Let's take a look at this coil here. You got several options as to how you can do this right here, including the shape, triangle or circular square, internal or external. In this case, I tried triangle internal, which got your triangle point going down at the piece, which is the closest I could get. My pitch is 1.963 per inch. I have it set for one and um, for 0.5 revolutions. Um, it can be less than that as you see it goes past the end of the piece here. And that allows me to basically be able to Get it to follow along and make this cut here. Now I can change the size on this if I need to. In this case here, I got 30 thousandths. Let's cut that back to 20 thousandths and see how it looks. So there you go. Looks pretty good. It's a pretty good representation of a neural. I could make it a little deeper if I wanted to. But once again, it's a pretty decent representation of what a neural would actually look like on a piece like this. One thing I have to do with this right here is have a good idea about what angle this has. There's not really a great way to do this because I'm dealing with a circular surface here, but one way I found if you take a protractor and lay it up and find a reference point, you can pull off of that an angle. I found this to be roughly 32 degrees. Now the next thing I need to do is get an idea about my pitch on my knurling tool. So I'm going to take a knurling tool and I'm going to find my medium knurl, which is this one right here. Now I'm going to roll it on this piece of paper, just one wheel. I want to roll the one wheel because I want to get a pattern here. And I want to get at least an inch of that pattern. I want to get at least an inch of that pattern so I can take a measurement on it and determine what my pitch is, how many knurls I have per inch. Okay, if you look down here, you can see if I measure off an inch of this right here, and if I start counting these, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. I got 20 lines per an inch. That's another piece of information I'm going to need here in just a minute. And that piece of information right there is going to allow me to be able to determine how many different leads. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a threading tool. I'm going to use a threading tool to cut a very coarse thread multiple leads. And by cutting that very coarse thread multiple leads, I should be able to get a piece that has a adequately sufficient neural for most situations. Now, I mentioned about needing to know that angle. I need to know that angle because I need to be able to calculate the lead for my um, my helix for my neural pattern. Now, when I was looking at this earlier, I came up with 32 degrees. 32 degrees. 
Now, 32 degrees is going to work for me. It's going to allow me to find out what this amount right here is, what this opposite is. Well, if I look at my, right here, I've got my adjacent. Now, I can use any number I want to here, but I'm going to base this upon a one inch diameter. And one inch diameter is going to give me an adjacent, which is the distance around the part of one inch is, is going to be one times pi, which is, let's just call it 3.14 right here. It's going to give me my distance around around there. Now, I need to know my opposite here. So I'm going to use my tangent of the angle is equal to my opposite over the adjacent. And I want it to solve for my opposite. So I divide both sides by my adjacent, leaving me my tangent of 32 degrees times 3.1416 equals my opposite here, which will be my lead on this. So if I go do the math on that, uh, 32, 322, 32, tan times 3.1416 gives me 1.963. So 1.963. I need that number right there. That's just only one of the two numbers I need. Okay, now let's do part two of the math here. Now, if you remember, when we measured that off, we had 20 of those patterns. We had 20 of those patterns per inch. So that's 20 per inch, per inch. Now I need to know that because I need to know how many of these go around the piece here. Well, my diameter of my piece is gonna be a diameter of 1.375. That's gonna be my diameter. So I need to turn that into circumference. So I take and multiply that by pi, I get my circumference here. And if I take um, 1.375 and multiply that by pi, I get 4.312, roughly 4.32 for my circumference. Now, if I have 20 of these per inch, how many want I have over 4.312? Well, I just multiply that by 20. That'll give me an idea about how many of these a total I have. 86.3. Okay, now for this to work, I need this to be 86. So I'm gonna make this 86. Now, for what I'm gonna do on the machine though, I need that number to be half of that because I'm gonna have to make two passes, one forward and one backwards on this for it to work. So I'm gonna take that 86 and divide it by, by two and I'm gonna get a number of 43. So it's gonna be how many leads I have. How many leads? Of a thread cut at 1.963 pitch. Here. Yeah, I wanted to break down how I actually program this. Now, this is in Maze Troll right here. So I picked a thread out for the pattern here. And then my lead, the number I calculated earlier, that 1.963, that is the lead for this thread here. Angle is still 60 degrees. 43 is the number of starts here, so I got 43 starts here. Heights, uh, 0 0.002, that's two thousandths there. Um, you can play around your depths a little bit. If I was doing this one again, I'd probably go a little bit more depth there. But you gotta be careful, if you get too much depth, it can cause you to have issues with the um, thread kind of getting, beginning to tear a little bit. Then I got my thread out here, for tool here, 60 degree for that. And my depth there, Cutting speed has to be pretty slow because this is going to have to time its starts and stops for the rotation. The faster you try to rotate this, the more off it's going to be. I found 20 worked pretty good for this. I could probably go a little bit more if I had a little bit more room to work with. The 8 there, by the way, turns a coin on in case you were wondering. Now down here is where, where it actually happens. I got my X value starting point 1.39 and then I've got my um, Z start point 1.625. Then I got my X value here, my 1.39 again. My final point, and then a 2.37 where it stops. 
Now if you notice on the next line, what it does is it gives you the option of putting another line in there. And that second line in there allows you to have it, have it feed back the same way it just came. So what it's doing is it's going to feed one way and then it's going to feed back on the same movement, which made this a whole lot more efficient than doing it any other way. Okay, so we got our piece ready to go. This is the machining process on it. I'm going to let this run and just let y'all watch a little bit of the process here. I'll jump back in with some things about what's going on in the process. Okay, right now it's starting the roughing passes of the outside contour of the part. This is going to go about making the actual shape of the part and um, allowing us to get the general profile of the piece. Now it's changing over to do the finishing pass here on the profile. Now it's transitioning and cutting the thread on the actual thread on the piece. Now if you notice it's threading from left to right, um, that's because on this slave right here we currently have a left hand threading tool on it. So to cut right hand threads you have to thread from left to right. Taking the grooving tool, cutting a back groove from the back as clearance for, to allow the knurling pass to take place. Now it's cutting the thread pass to do the knurls. And it's making them one, two passes in the same location, one one direction, the other the other direction. These are going to go about creating that neural shape. It takes a little bit, a bit of time here, but it's, you know, once again, it's an unusual solution to a problem that could come up. continues to work through and cut the 43 passes that are necessary to get your um, neural pattern cut into the piece. As you notice, there's different, different amounts of time that it waits, it finishes one pass before it starts another pass. That is the machine waiting for the spindle rotation to get back to the point it needs to engage. Now, other some other machines may be capable of doing this right here. I know on some of our lathes that we have, we cannot do this because of the fact for it to have it to do the multiple leads it's going to have to continually change your start location on your z-axis 
So it would get considerably long if you're trying to cut 43 leads. They're just having to move that start location every time on the Z. Once it finishes this up, it's going to change back to the grooving tool. It's going to send the machine home. It's going to pull call up the parts catcher and it's going to go about parting our piece off so that we can have this part of the piece finished up. This by far would not be the most efficient way to do this. But once again, if you don't have a knurling tool and you need to cut a knurl on a piece on a, on a CNC lathe, this is a way to do it. Also, by, unlike a traditional knurl, knurling tool, which basically will raise the diameter, this right here does not change the diameter. So there comes our porch catcher and it is going to part our piece off. And as it falls into the porch catcher, that is this part. And here is the final product. As you can see, the knurl pattern looks pretty good. It is a little bit on the shallow side. In this case, I probably should go a little bit deeper if I was going to run these for real. But once again, it is a good pattern. It looks the part. It is the part. And it's an unusual way of doing this. I hope this helped, and I hope this gives you some ideas on some creative solutions that you could come up with to go about making parts in ways that are not the normal way to make them. Once again, I am Derek Hogan with North Georgia Technical College in the CSC Technology Precision Machining and Twin Dye Programs. We are working with practical machinists to collaborate to make some educational content videos. If there's anything you would like to see, uh, leave a comment in the comments below with any ideals that you may have. And also don't forget to like and subscribe for additional videos.